good afternoon everybody uh, today uh, we'll try to discuss that uh, remaining part of the micro joining and uh, nano joining technologies so to do that first of all we'll try to look into the what are the works done so far in the field of medical devices uh, using different micro joining technologies so if we see that one of the important aspect for the medical devices uh, that actually made uh, from the wide range of materials but difficulty in the in that sense that when we try to join two different metals a similar kind of materials or uh, non metals uh, that generally used in the um, medical devices so here first thing is that we need to ensure that uh, to choosing any materials or methods that it should be safe uh, to be implanted uh, in the uh, human body and it should be bi compatibility and should be extremely reliable for the human body so uh, we should look into that aspects before uh, processing any materials uh, for medical applications either in terms of the uh, processing uh, working with the any medical devices or any implantable things uh, that is uh, implanted in the human body so most of the cases we used that hermetically sealed enclosure and that material should have or characteristic of the typical the long term corrosion resistance so these are the requirement typical requirement for the application of the any kind of uh, processing technologies specifically for the medical devices so what are the typical materials we use for the uh, medical application or maybe in the point of view of the uh, micro joining uh, technologies so that most of the materials we use here the titanium safe memory alloy platinum alloy uh, stainless steel and and sometimes the plastics so if we look into all these materials and what are the different welding technologies normally apply for the medical devices that are the resistance welding ultrasonic welding transmission laser welding and radio frequency or dielectric welding and most in the form of a uh, spot and the seam welding these are the individual welding techniques we generally apply for the medical uh, devices but complexity arises depending upon the geometry of the uh, actual uh, component specifically when you choose any kind of welding processes must have look into the different aspects for example uh, it should be least affected by the surrounding materials when you choose some certain uh, joining technologies or welding technologies for the uh, medical uh, components that is the most uh, important requirement so in that case maybe very precise control of the heat source is required so in that aspect probably most commonly or in generally uh, laser welding techniques is more suitable in that respect so in general what are the typical challenges and issues in selecting the materials uh, for the micro joining of the uh, medical components and as well as devices first thing is that the compatibility uh, of the bi compatibility performance as well as the electrical uh, in uh, electrical conductivity sometimes triggers for the material corrosion resistance surface quality or surface finish should be very high even after welding and the uh, micro scale weldability of the materials and most of the cases the weldability of the dissimilar combination of the materials or dissimilar configuration of the uh, materials uh, is actually necessary and that we face uh, or that actually brings the different challenges in the uh, micro joining uh, application of the micro joining technologies so to even after all these challenges so there are several materials and joining methodologies has been so far used or it still it is evolving uh, for the and um, specific type of material such as the uh, platinum tantalum or titanium for this material normally resistance laser and ultrasonic welding technologies are used of course these welding technologies are used in the micro scale application copper alloy and stainless steel normally resistance laser and sometimes we use the bridging technology and uh, solder 
for the lead free solder in that case we use the welding methodology or joining methodology like brazing, soldering and ultrasonic and pr plastic materials probably we use the laser and adhesive and specifically for silicon it, it is uh, we generally use the different adhesives. So, because adhesives is one kind of uh, joining technology. So, these are the materials and corresponding joining technologies normally use uh, in case of uh, micro joining uh, applications. So, first we look focus into uh, that specific micro joining uh, technologies and for a specific uh, vesicular devices these are uh, the vesicular devices actually uh, catheters and guide wires to balloon angioplasty and stents sends these are the uh, here in this devices we use the welding technology in different way. So, maybe if you look into that figures probably in this case guide wire or uh, catheter basically is a kind of uh, wire or a kind of uh, hollow tube. So, that is typically used and in this case it may be it the size and shape may vary uh, according to the applications and having the different functionality of the different component uh, of a, a complete medical devices or uh, me medical component. So, here uh, if you see the catheter is a thin tube made from the medical grade materials uh, that can be inserted in the body uh, generally single use device. So, in this case uh, this uh, sometimes the when the single use device sometimes we use uh, in, in that way that high costly uh, nickel titanium alloy can be used uh, for this uh, in this medical devices. So, sometimes it is necessary to replace some part of the uh, nickel titanium um, wire or maybe tube uh, uh, replaced by the uh, stainless steel tube. So, that can be the cost effective methodology. So, in that case it is necessary to join the stainless steel tube or wire to the nickel titanium alloy. So, in that way it is applicable for the joining technology for the specific uh, devices. So, if you see that guide wires for the catheter application some part of the wire may be joining small diameter wire in butt oil configuration. So, mostly joining of the uh, SS 316L stainless steel and wire to the nitinol end effector or the some part of the nitinol is necessary to join. Of course, SS316L is used because it provides the good transmission and low cost, but alignment of the diameter and control in the weld zone is really very difficult. So, in this case probably laser can be a, uh, or laser welding can be a good solution. Uh, like balloon catheters joining of the polymer balloon to the polymer tube on the guide wires is sometimes required. So, in this case either direct laser welding or adhesive bonding generally used uh, in this case. So, of course, in the, the generally single use device uh, this uh, vesicular device where the we use uh, the catheters and the guide wires or joining the balloons. Uh, in this case the uh, it is generally single use device but if you look at the stent is the permanent implant is required in this case typically the stent are produced from the laser cut and from a tube and welded on a small wire. So, objective is to the this uh, stent is the actually need to uh, put is the collapsed and delivered in the very precise location that is the objective. So, in this case challenges of the excellent surface finish and the edge finish control of the heat affected zone and extreme control on the orientation and the laser cutting path is the uh, main issues uh, specifically the application of the uh, laser in this uh, in this uh, medical uh, components. Sometimes we use the pumps and sensor also. So, there are several types of internal and external pumps are used for example, the insulin pump and left uh, left ventricular assist device. So, in this case we use uh, that it is necessary the joining of the pumps and different type of sensor electrical circuit board is necessary. So, what are the challenges if we see that welding and joining of the plastic foil is necessary in this case bonding 
sometimes fragile semiconductor to with respect to each other or sometimes microscopic circuit assembly is required the wire or tube attachment for the interconnection is also required so all this joining uh, or different types of materials they are having the huge variety of the uh, properties is specifically necessary in this cases then we find out the micro joining of the medical components that pacemaker manufacturing it's a space maker is basically mainly a pulse generator uh, and leads so pulse generator consists of the one is the battery and the second is the circuit board so battery basically to generate the electricity and circuit board to generate control and deliver the pulses so that is the main purpose of pacemaker manufacturing uh, process so in this case battery is hermetically sealed laser sealed to prevent any leakage of the uh, chemical so it is sealed in such a way that there must not be any leakage to the chemicals during the body second part is that battery and the circuit board are inside a titanium case that is also hermetically uh, laser sealed so when during the seal it probably we need to put the laser uh, put the laser source and then we seal uh, the materials or this components and then we is a complete making a package of the complete pacemaker so of course in this pacemaker the internal circuits is generally connected through the uh, brazing process uh, but connector block sometimes encapsulated in a bicompatible polymer such as poly uh, polyurethane so here uh, which is interconnected by the titanium wire and that the typical welding process here is doing either laser and uh, resistance micro welding processes so we can see even for pacemaker manufacturing although there are several components we can use it but it is also necessary all this um, precaution for example should not be leakage the any chemical components exist in the battery and then uh, that to do that it is always we need the hermetically sealed uh, a sample and that we using laser and uh, most of the cases we use the circuit board maybe is the soldering and maybe internal circuit either soldering or uh, bridging we, we can it is connected that is also one kind of uh, um, joining technologies and finally it is necessary that titanium it's a titanium is a very good bicompatibility material so sometimes it is the uh, certain part is uh, encapsulated within the uh, uh, titanium uh, within the titanium case so this so several in this all these components we find we find out that there is a tremendous application of the uh, different welding and joining uh, technologies uh, in case of pacemaker manufacturing if we see the other radioactive seed implant that is also one kind of uh, uh, radiation therapy that has been developed as an alternative to the external beam irradiation for cancer treatment basically so in this case the we use a radioactive substances sealed in a seed and that is necessary to implant it near the cancer so in this case the cancer cell is destroyed it is way the cancer cell is destroyed by the energy given of the radioactive material but uh, the issues are the uh, sealing of the uh, radioactive substances that is also is that is generally done the uh, titanium case and using the laser micro welding process and finally the Uh, uh, so laser micro welding processes that is the only application of the micro welding in this case uh, but uh, difficulty is that uh, although we can use the laser micro welding process so we need to control the heat affected zone to the radioactive material so that's why it is necessary to develop uh, and suitable process methodology using the uh, laser micro welding process for the for this kind of very precision uh, manufacturing so apart from the of course when you use the different micro joining uh, technologies in, in the for the medical devices is it is necessary to mechanically test the uh, different welded joints so of course in conventional welding processes we use the different type of test tensile testing compressive testing or maybe sometimes bend testing all this kind of testing we generally done in the conventional welding processes but specifically all this uh, type of micro joint components so small scale tensile testing equipment is required to do the any kind of uh, tensile testing for example we see some examples are also here here we see that bar joint so joining of the two components if you see uh, two metals are joined is bar joint configuration and 
in this case the tensile load is uh, is acting in the outward direction and we try to analyze the uh, load versus the we can uh, failure mode or uh, joint strain uh, using uh, this this uh, simple uh, ap application of the tensile load but this since sample size are very small so we need to consider all these tests in the uh, micro tensile testing in the micro tensile testing equipment so from here from the tensile analysis we can find out the joint strength or maybe the failure mode similarly lab joint configuration that we, it is it is it is necessary to test the weld joint if the joint is lab joint configuration then some sort of shear load uh, the we can find out the shear strength of this joint so in the second one but this is the lab joint and sometimes we find out the uh, peel test so application of the load here and the here is the welded joint and there if you do the peel test peel test we can find out the strength of the joint with this geometric configuration of course with the lab joint way uh, the actual joint is the lab joint uh, finally also it is possible to do some torque test also if the lab joint configuration here we can apply the uh, torque uh, to find out the uh, joint strength and we can do the failure analysis so this uh, like conventional welding processes even for micro welding application these are the these are the typical type in the bar joint configuration or the lab joint configuration of the oil joint are uh, subjected to different kind of tensile load shear load peel test or maybe application of the torque can deduce some kind of mechanical properties or failure analysis uh, typically used for the uh, medical devices. Now, after doing the analysis of the medical uh, components, if we can uh, look into that what are the advancement is actually happens in the specifically laser micro welding processes. So, to analyze this thing there are several advancement happens uh, till date in the micro welding uh, or micro joining micro welding technologies specifically using uh, uh, using laser in a different way so we'll try to look into that so here application of the laser control of the laser source probably useful to design the different type of or to develop the different type of micro welding technologies so first we'll look into that one of the such technique is the shadow technique so shadow technique stands for the stepless high speed accurate and discrete one pulse welding if we look into that shadow comes from uh, this uh, first uh, letter of this word and that is highlighted in the lead color so based on that that is called the shadow technique so what 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 uh, actually we understand from the this shadow technique if you see that in principle the transforms macro laser spot oil to the micro laser seam oil that is the basic principle. So, here maximum pulse length, length is possible in the diet pump laser that is why diet pump laser is typically used uh, to develop this shadow techniques. So, uh, little bit explanation of the shadow techniques if we look into these two figures. So, if we look into the first figure we see that the fusion zone it looks like that after application of the laser may obviously it is a pulse laser so fusion zone kind of overlapping uh, with with respect to the speed or we can say that it's a accumulation of the several spot that simply overlaps now pulse mode and the uh, power is 300 watt in this case and pulse i think pulse energy is 27 joule and the pulse on time 5 millisecond and the pulse frequency or pulse repetition rate is around 25 hertz and velocity is basically 300 millimeter per minute. So, that means, uh, it is a very high uh, uh, high velocity 300 millimeter per minute uh, I think 5 millimeter per second and not very high I would say moderate velocity we can say. So, with this pulse uh, um, with this pulse characteristic that means with the typical pulse parameter some pulse on time frequency uh, and the power and the pulse energy it is and with this specific speed means uh, what way we are moving the laser source 
So, with this configuration we can find out this is the overlapping of the several spot, but if it is possible since there is a pulse duration is 5 millisecond. Now, if it is possible to move that entire duration or entire length throughout the duration of the pulse. So, through it is a maybe I can I can say that it is a kind of equivalent way uh, like a, a continuous mode of uh, laser welding process. So, in the continuous mode of there is a continuous application of the uh, power or maybe continu continu continuous application of the power. So, that it can make a very smooth uh, surface appearance not like pulse in the overlapping. But the similar kind of things in case of pulse laser welding, if it is possible to cover the entire length of the uh, weld in single over the duration of the pulse on time, then probably that can be converted as a very single pulse uh, welding process. So, if the second figure if you see here thus using the shadow technique, shadow technique is nothing but the moving of that as a pulse energy is 9 joule and pulse shape and it is a pulse duration is 20 millisecond and velocity V f equal to 30 meter per minute. So, it is a very high velocity if when the laser is moved with a very high velocity probably the weld length can be covered within the duration of the pulse. So, that is the implementation. So, instead of using the several pulse overlapping we can we can use only the single pulse and we can use the equivalently in the form of a as a continuous laser. So, that is the uh, technology generally we use in the uh, shadow process. So, that is the one kind of development, but of course, in this case the several trials are required and that may be the material specific to find out the actual parameters that can be that can be applicable uh, using the shadow technique. So, this is one type of advances in the laser micro welding process. Now, if we look into the other welding processes that that is called laser droplet welding. Of course, the purpose of using the uh, or development of this process uh, typical micro welding process is to that overcome the gap bridging. So, gap between the two plates or gap between the two uh, uh, different samples specifically very high reflective materials and very high heat sensitive materials. So, on these type typical types of materials using the conventional laser welding processes sometimes it becomes very difficult. So, to do that alternative method probably the it is possible some using the liquid metal droplet uh, that is created at the end of a wire and of course, using some pulse laser. So, in this laser droplet welding process there is a uh, that consist of the pulse laser with a triple optical beam splitting. So, the beam splitting the triple optical beam splitting system uh, uh, <coughs> that is the one requirement and normally NDOAG laser can be used or probably this process is developed using the NDOAG laser and a wire feed system. So, feeding of the wire because it is necessary to produce the uh, molten droplet. So, that comes from the wire a target positioning system. So, a target positioning system when you targeting the droplet of the metal on a specific zone because it is a micro link process it is very precisely we have to fix the uh, uh, target position. Shielding gas supply simply protect the molten pool from the out outside atmosphere and the mechanical positioning system. So, these are the typical components of the laser droplet welding, but how it works. So, if you look into that specific in general this uh, the thing is the the if you see that this phases of the uh, process is that first is the in terms of the droplet creation second is the droplet detachment then droplet flight and droplet landing to the accurate position and then finally droplet solidify and then after solidification droplet solidification the two materials can be joined even there is a huge gap uh, between these two materials. So, how it works if you look into that typical pulse shape in the uh, this figure shows the power versus time. So, initially the duration of the pulse is more and the 
moderate having the pulse power is good moderate pulse power. So, that actually helps to create the droplet by melting the the uh, by melting the wire in this case and then next is that the magnitude of the power is very less and over certain di distance within that it is actually the droplet is moved along with the wire towards the target target point of the welded join and third we it is possible to use that high power but over a short duration high pulse power but over a short duration so that actually helps to droplet droplet detachment from the uh, wire and it actually put exactly put into the uh, exact position of the um, weld joint. So, that actually helps to create the uh, weld joint in this case. So, typical application if we see that stainless steel similar kind of material joining titanium and stainless steel which is really very difficult to join in the uh, conventional welding processes. Uh, most of the cases the joining of titanium and steel is in good joint can be obtained using the solid state welding processes, but using the laser droplet welding process the titanium and stainless steel can be possible to join of 200 micrometer thick plate. And even this oil, oil joint is also possible if there is a gap of the, the 200 micrometer in this case. So, in this perspective of the size of the plate thickness the gap of 200 micrometers is really very big in this case. So, of course, using this technology that kind of problem typical problem can be solved. So, apart from this laser droplet oiling other advanced oiling technologies like laser spike oiling that is also developed and this is also developed on the keeping in the this thing the normally in the uh, BART joint configuration. So, sorry lab joint configuration here in the gaps if there is a gaps in the micro welding exist that is always problematic and and sometimes it also exist by if we look into the overall structure of the uh, a, a, any kind of devices. So, when you try to do any practical application of the devices sometimes the gap may be very big. So, in this case the one of the suitable welding technologies is the laser spike welding. So, that this welding technology is useful even there is a huge gap. What are the principle in this case? the recoil pressure driven material flow to bridge the gaps in lab joint by spot welding technology. So, lab joint configuration and normally use and specifically the spot welding technology we use by, but it is a create some recoil pressure driven material flow. Let us see how it works if you look into the process itself. First melting using the low power in the upper layer. So, upper layer is melted using the low power laser and then when using the low power laser probably it remains in the conduction mode not the keyhole mode. So, we should use the conduction mode laser for the melting of the upper layer. Then allow it is necessary to allow sufficiently large or completely penetrated oil. So, we need to allow increase the power such that it completely penetrate the oil. Then again increase the laser power to generate sufficient recoil pressure. So, that sufficient recoil pressure that actually creates the diaphragm like liquid pool that actually contact with the lower layer. So, even there is a huge gap in the upper and lower layer that diaphragm like liquid pool actually with contact with the lower layer. Now, the joint can be formed it looks like the superficial surface melting or like a breach like adhesive between the two plates. So, so this is the one this is the laser spike welding process, but if the lower surface is very clean. So, breach like addition is possible in this type of typical joint and if lower layer is too, condu too conductive then it is very difficult to join because with the application of the heater heat apart from the creating the or melt increasing the large volume of the oil pool that of the heat will be conducted away. So, application found out for this typical oiling process the stainless steel of 200 micrometer thick material. Another advances in laser micro welding technology if you see that is called twist technology that is transmission welding by an incremental scanning technique. 
So, in this case that high beam quality laser like fiber laser, it is a basically easy degradation of the thermoplastic metal is difficult to ap apply in case of thermo uh, thermo mechanical uh, sorry thermoplastic material and when the laser can be moves a very low velocity. Fast rotating and the slow linear motion are focused high quality uh, laser laser beam can be uh, can be used in the different way. So, that local and temporal laser beam modulation uh, strategy can be used in this case. Second thing is that a periodic beam deflection dynamically is also applied to control that can control the fusion and the application. So, not that means the not exactly focusing on the laser beam for a long time uh, in a uh, in a particular zone rather if laser beam we control the if we periodically deflect the laser beam and of course, if we control the laser path also uh, that it better opportunity to create to damage of the uh, any kind of thermoplastic materials. So, in that case it is possible to avoid any kind of voids or porosity uh, can be reduced. So, if you look into these figures, so different scanning path can be followed. It can be circular, it can be linear, but linear in the zigzag way or some other combination of the laser path and that comes from the periodic deflection of the beam. So, basically the look by locally and with the time scale if laser beam modulation strategy can be adopted. So, that high power laser beam can be used easily in this case. So, that not only uh, uh, reduce the damaging of the thermoplastic materials, but at the same time it try to reduce the other porosity and the voids that is kind of defects in this welding process otherwise <laughs> defects uh, otherwise it may exist in if you try to use the laser in a conventional way. So, that is why twist technology is mainly used for transparent poly polymers even transparent polymers if you want to join using the twist technology there may not be requirement any absorbing additives. Otherwise conventional welding process if you do not adopt the twist technology the when you try to join the two transparent material for the laser wavelength. So, in that case some absorbing medium is required in interface, but in this case that is not required that is the uh, that is the uh, main uh, advantage of this twist technology. Now, apart from the advances in the different micro joining or micro joining technologies there is a some advancement also happens or till uh, some uh, research work is going on in the development of the different nano joining technologies and most of the cases these are confined in a research and development section, but not commercially applied, but we will try to look into the few nano joining technologies. So, if you look this here if you see the what are the different type of uh, nano joining technologies. So, here if we see that one the solid state welding oil uh, nano joining technologies that we use that is called electron beam welding, diffusion bonding, ultrasonic welding and the cold oiling these are the all solid state oiling process and that is used in nano joining technologies liquid phase reflow, soldering, resistance soldering, active brazing, laser brazing these are the typical processes uh, in the category of uh, brazing and soldering typically in case of nano joining technologies. Laser beam welding and resistant welding these are the two fusion welding technologies we observed in the application of the nano joining technologies and finally, the adhesive bonding are also used for the nano joining technologies. So, we will look into the few uh, nano joining technologies. Uh, here. So, first is that looking at the solid state nano bonding. Here the principle is the diffusion nano bonding using metallic nano particles. We have already discussed that when we try to use the nano particles, the nano particles the surface area and, uh, and volume uh, ratio um, basically is very high. So, that is having the different properties that may not exist is the uh, other is the very finite size of the particles or maybe larger size of the particles. So, nano particles is normally centered to form the networks and these networks are joined joined to the substrates by diffusion 
and the main driving force for the diffusion is the to reduce the surface to reduce the surface area. Now, with the reduction in the size of the nanoparticles, the diffusion is actually enhanced. So, diffusion mechanism is enhanced for the further reducing in the size of the particles because in this case uh, lower activation energy is required and there is an increment of the specific surface energy that actually results in the decreasing of the sintering and bonding temperature. So, so if the size of the nanoparticles is even it is reduced then it actually enhance the diffusion bonding uh, mechanism and at the same time during the when you when you try to make the joining by the uh, sintering process. So, in this case the there is a uh, decreasing of the uh, dec sintering temperature and the bonding temperature can be reduced if you try to reduce the nanoparticle size. So, that is the in that principle the nano bonding of the different particles can be possible. But this is the significantly the development of the low temperature joining process for polymeric based microelectronics application. So, it is best suited for the microelectronics applic applications and specifically uh, uh, polymeric base. And that is why it is necessary to uh, when you try to application this technology for the microelectronics application or for the polymeric based materials. So, in this case it is necessary to do conduct this process over the low temperature. So, that is only possible in the because nanoparticle size is very small. So, in that actually it enhance the reduction of the temperature of the process overall process and of course, sintering temperature. So, that is the one of the nano bonding technologies is is till it is going on uh, in the R and D phase. Now, we look into that solid state nano bonding. So, here if you see the direct joining of the carbon nanotubes using a fused electron beam. So, if you see into the figure there are two uh, carbon nanotubes and it is necessary to join between the two carbon nanotubes, but of course, we need some external energy. So, here fused electron beam can be used to joining these two carbon nanotubes. So, figure A shows that a single wall carbon nanotube of 2 nanometer in diameter crossing with another single wall carbon nanotube which is having 0.9 nanometer in diameter. Now, 60 second of electron irradiation promotes a molecular connections between the two tubes that actually forming a junction. So, of course, in this case it is a it is necessary to very precisely control the electron beam and that should be focused on the exactly on the joining on the joining of the two nanotube. So, here the electron beam is actually directed to induce the structural defect like vacancies or interstitials of the crossing point of the carbon nanotube. So, at that point when you create the vacancies or the interstitial in that point it is necessary to control the electron and then self arrangement of the carbon after creating that kind of defects basically the vacancies or interstitial that is the one kind of crystal defects. So, so if we using the electron beam if we try to create the defects at the joining point. So, then after that self arrangement of carbon atoms can occur and uh, at the high specimen temperature and they can bond together uh, that means two different carbon nanotube. So, this is the one type of technology. Uh, nanotube, but still it is under in the R and D section research and development section. Another point is that nano soldering and nano bridging. So, even like uh, conventional and micro scale soldering and bridging even for nano soldering and nano bridging probably we understand the soldering and bridging probably the second material we try to put very precisely that second material join the, the other two material. So, for the successful nano soldering and nano bridging a tiny amount of the solder has to be very precisely delivered exactly at the bond area. So, is this is this is significant in the assembly and the integration of the nano electronics industry it is very important. So, this type of uh, joining technologies or maybe say nano soldering and nano bridging technology. So, 
how it can be happen that nanosecond pulse laser is used to melt the gold nanoparticles and that gold nanoparticles actually try to join the platinum nanoparticles. So, first figure is this one electron micrograph of the platinum and aluminum uh, sorry gold networks from by the laser bridging and the second one is the so the plat platinum nano particles are held together by the molten molten gold uh, uh, particle. So, if here if you see that that very precisely if it is possible to put the gold particle in between this platinum particle uh, that that can be joined with the application of the even nanosecond pulse laser. Of course, there is a scope of using the uh, femtosecond we can more precisely control uh, the source of the heat. So, in this case that is also possible to precisely use the femtosecond lasers also to create that kind of nano joining or nano soldering or nano bridging technologies. Now, we come to that fusion uh, nano welding. So, fusion nano welding what are the typical heat source is used. So, in this case that laser beam joule heating that means joule heating means we, we can use the resistant welding technology and welding of the platinum nano wires to uh, in, that is also one type of fusion nano welding the two nano wires are touched end to end by piezoelectric manipulation and followed by a welding uh, current. See that first figure. So, here if we see that welding of the platinum nano air, if the first figure if we see the resistance nano welding. So, platinum nano air to the very thin gold air. So, if it is possible the, at the joint interface there is some resistance and if it is uh, if it is possible to pass uh, through the uh, current and if we create some uh, heat at the interface due to the resistance between these two materials. So, that is, is probably sufficient to produce the fusion nano welding process between these two materials. If you see the right hand side figure here this figure we see that two platinum wire uh, nano wire before uh, current supply and uh, before current supply, but if we put it uh, using but uh, handling of the uh, proper position of the nano wire, but handling of this kind of nano wire or maybe nano tube is very uh, difficult in this case the piezoelectric manipulation is required to exactly put or to at the proper position of the two different um, uh, nano wire. So, after putting the um, uh, it specific position of this nano wire then current uh, can be applied and that can be joined by the resistant welding process. So, third figure if you look into this figure here if you see the femtosecond laser nano welding the gold particles with 100 femtosecond laser uh, pulses. So, femtosecond nano uh, welding means the nano particles if you use the ultra short pulse laser here it is a femtosecond pulse laser. So, that uh, gold particles can come with each other and they can be joined in between the with the in the by the means of the fusion uh, nano welding process. So, if you see that all these classes although we use the laser beam and the either resistant welding these are two typical uh, uh, nano welding processes so far developed for the nano joining technologies, but in this case of course, the control of the heat source is very very much necessary to get the successful of course of course, all this methodology or process of the nano welding still in the recent development stage. So, if you look back to the different uh, nano welding micro welding technologies and if you see overall analysis of this all these processes or technologies developed so far, uh, if you see that first thing is that very small possible focused beam in the form of a very small spot or in a even almost like a line of the metals or non metals are possible probably in using the laser uh, process. So, that is why most of the cases you found out the laser micro welding or nano welding technologies has been developed as compared to the other other developed uh, heat sources. 
high quality defect free joints are possible for highly conductive materials such as gold silver copper in jewelry industry specifically using uh, uh, using different micro welding or micro joining technologies micro joining technology of course it is still continuous continually develop continuously developing in some of the new fields like electronics biomedical biomedical instrumentation or the sensor and packaging industry by taking the advantage of the other specific developments like robotics robotics and the automated system and of course with the help of the very precisely controlled as a laser source so all actually helpful using this or um, there is a several development of different micro joining technologies also uh, going on the successful joint dimension so far from this investigation is find out that specifically i am talking about the micro joining technology that 10 micrometer uh, with the superior joint quality is achieved uh, titanium polyamide and glass and of course very difficult to weld material such as aluminum alloy are success are successfully joined by the laser micro welding process if you see the various soldering processes and alloys widely used in the micro electronics industries interconnections and of course in packaging industry uh, that have been modified and for the development of the uh, for the process of nano joining is also required in this case we see we have also observed that focused electron beam is can be widely used in micro and the nano joining technologies specifically joining of the carbon nanotube so we found out that focused ion beam which is also another relatively new energy source that can also be utilized for the making nano junctions uh, using the in different nano wires so but what are the future development and challenges for the in the micro joining and uh, nano joining technologies that first come to the mind that exist future challenges in the current scenario of micro joining and nano joining field for the both simulation tool as well as the experimental characterization so we can found out that uh, several different types of the dissimilar combination of the materials may be characterization of the welding technologies like uh, characterization of the welded joint is also necessary and of course the underlining the physical uh, understanding of this process in terms of the uh, a different simulation tool are also not developed so far specifically in mino, micro joining and the nano joining technology that is the one direction that needs to have the scope of the development and next is that it is also necessary to understand the underlying heat transfer mechanism in extremely short pulse laser for example in the femtosecond laser source and the interaction of the laser with the materials so that understanding may help to give the uh, physical uh, ph uh, phenomena that actually happening during the any micro joining or nano joining technologies of course there is a need for the more modeling and more and more experimental studies also required for proper identification of the range of the process parameter to avoid the insufficient joint strain or to avoid the any kind of damage of the material basically the successful uh, process parameter domain is necessary to identify through experimental investigation that is also required in, in case of micro joining and nano joining technologies but real challenge in the metal to polymer joining in the biomedical devices is due to the huge difference in their material properties and the nature of the contact surface so we need to investigate more on this specific area specific the metal to polymeric metal to polymer because that is most of the biomedical and uh, medical and uh, biomedical instrument and devices uh, uh, implants also we can find out there is a need to combine combination of the that uh, metals and non metals joining so more and more type this type of joinings may be helpful to uh, strengthen the micro joining and, and nano joining uh, field so also it needs to investigate from the various aspects finally the geometric precision and the cost of equipment is another future challenge for the mass production by micro joining and nano joining technology so in that case most we found out that even for micro joining 
some micro engineering technologies are also developed under the microscope uh, which is cannot be handled in the conventional uh, processes. So, in that case probably that precision is required precision uh, when we try to develop in the uh, any kind of uh, uh, micro joining or nano joining technologies. So, that is the cost is the real challenge and nowadays. So, now uh, after discussion of this different micro joining and nano joining technologies. So, at the end I am trying to discuss some uh, numerical problems that related to the different micro joining technology that may help to understand the process and in some mathematical point of view. So, let us look into the one example for the micro joining and nano joining technologies first is that if you see the in a pulse laser micro welding process the following parameters are noted that laser scanning speed 4 millimeter per second pulse energy 6 joule pulse width or pulse on time 5 millisecond pulse frequency 20 hertz and assume the shape of the pulse is like a square. Now, if you look into the this right hand side figure if we see that this is the typical temporal pulse shape. So, pulse that uh, may be you can say the x axis represents the time axis y axis represents the power in this case. So, so, pulse on time is the duration of the pulse the on time and maybe if you see that this is the complete one cycle time over the cycle time some some initial time or maybe uh, some time would be is the that is called the pulse on time and remaining time is the pulse off time. So, that one that completes the one cycle time. So, the area over this shape of the so rectangular pulse shape the area covered by this shape that actually represents the pulse energy. So, pulse energy that means power into that y axis since y x axis represents time and y axis represents the power. So, that power and duration the multiplication of this thing that represents the area and that area represents the pulse energy. So, looking into this here we, we can see we will try to solve this problem here that first thing is the what is the peak power and average power uh, uh, in this case. So, if we see that peak power suppose we assume this is the peak power. So, if we try to solve question number A. So, peak power and the peak power and maybe over the duration the pulse on time. So, here the pulse on time is the 5 millisecond that actually represents the area that means pulse energy pulse energy equal to 6 joule. So, from here we can find out peak power equal to 6 joule by 5 millisecond. So, millisecond. So, from here we can find out that 1.2 kilo watt. So, 1.2 kilo watt is the peak power in this case. Now, if you see the what is the average power. So, average power we can find out the average power is the that actually estimate over the one cycle. So, if frequency is 20 hertz pulse frequency. So, in this case that uh, cycle time 1 by frequency that means 1 by 20 second. Now, if you see the similar energy balance the average power into cycle time is equal to the pulse energy that is the 6 that pulse energy we assume the over the cycle time the pulse energy is although within one cycle that is the only total amount of the energy that is the pulse energy. So, that is why from here that you can find out the average power equal to uh, 6 into 20 that means 120 joule per second. So, 120 watt. 
So, here if you see that that pulse of the pulse energy is 6 joule, but from there if we know the uh, shape of the pulse and pulse duration, pulse frequency all this data are available in this case we can find out for this process what is the total maximum power that is called the peak power. So, peak power is you can find out 1.2 kilowatt and average power you can find out that 120 watt. So, that means the in pulse energy in pulse laser cases if we consider that is equivalent to the continuous laser that means there is a continuous application of the energy then it is equivalent it is, a, in, it is equivalent to the con continuous supply of the ener uh, power. So, in this case laser power is only 120 watt that means average power is 120 watt, but peak power is in this case is 1 1.2 kilowatt. So, there is a huge difference the peak power and the average power and then next part what is the pulse up time. So, definitely pulse up time the total cycle cycle time minus uh, pulse on time 5 millisecond that means uh, 1 by 20 second minus 5 millisecond 5 into 10 to the power minus 3 second. So, if we estimate this thing we will be able to find out what is the total pulse out time. So, with this typical characteristic of the pulse parameter we can find out the different other parameters. So, this is one type of example if we look into the other example that that is that is correspond to the diffusion bonding process. So, here in the diffusion bonding process the mass concentration of carbon in present material is 0.2 percent and over the time T and a fixed pressure the mass concentration of carbon increases to 1 percent and measure at 0 0.2 millimeter depth of the sample. Assume that the process is carried out at 800 degree centigrade the activation energy of diffusion is 157 kilo joule per mole and D 0 that is corresponds to the constant or to find out the diffusion for carbon in iron is 0 0.7 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter square per second. So, let us look into first the problem itself. So, diffusion bonding process the with the over the time the carbon atoms becomes diffused and over a certain depth. So, that depth is here 0 0.2 millimeter and carbon concentration increases from 0 0.2 percent to 1 percent and that actually happens over a certain time that time is T and but under the condition of a fixed pressure. So, at constant pressure and at uh, all the process is carried out at constant temperature that means 800 degree centigrade. Now, since diffusion coefficients also is a temperature dependent. So, we will try to find out what may be the uh, diffusion coefficients at the at 800 degree centigrade. So, we use this formula d equal to d 0 into e to the power minus q by r t if we, are, we know that q is the activation energy r is the characteristic gas constant and t is the temperature. So, basically in this case T the D 0 is given that constant D 0 is 0 0.7 to 10 to the power minus 4 it is given here and Q is the activation energy. So, activation energy for diffusion is 157 kilo joule per mole. So, 157 into 10 to the power 3 joule per mole and we use the characteristic gas constant R equal to 8.314 and this is the temperature, but remember the temperature in this formula should be given in the Kelvin. So, so that Kelvin temperature we put it and we can find out the this thing. So, that this should be we should check the dimension dimension of this uh, that means unit of this equation. So, it should be dimension less when we put the different units of the different variables in this case. So, then D is coming the 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 12 meter square per second that is the uh, diffusion coefficients in this case uh, for this specific uh, at this specified pressure and that is specified temperature. Now, concentration gradient is another parameter need to define d c by d x. So, concentration gradient it is uh, clearly uh, obvious that carbon concentration in that is given kg per meter cube that mass concentration that changes from 0.2 to 1 percent. So, that means 0.2 to the initial and the 1 difference and it is given in the uh, k 
kg per meter cube that since it is given in the carbon in the parent metal is this so in terms of kg per meter cube we can find out we can multiply by the density and that actually represents that kg per meter cube 0.2 to 1. Now, what is d x here? d x is given here the depth. So, it is initially on the on the top that uh, carbon present one is the 0.2 percent at the on the top of the surface, but the carbon is diffused up to the depth of the 0 0.2 millimeter. So, 0 0.2 to 0 that is the change of the d x uh, that is the d x that means change of the length along x. So, into 10 to the minus 3 meter. So, from here we can find out this is the concentration gradient. Suppose this diffusion happens over the cross sectional area A and the depth we measure normal to the cross section area in the uh, normal to the cross section area along the direction along the direction uh, along the depth amount that is D. Now, what is volume of the diffusion bonding is basically the cross sectional area and the normal to the cross sectional area the depth is d. So, that represents the total volume of the diffusion bonding. So, mass of the diffusion bonding is simply multiplied by the density rho and of course, this rho we consider the density of carbon. Now, m by a is basically d into rho. Now, t using this formula we can find out what is the total time of the diffusion t equal to minus 1 by d m by a and d c by d x inverse. So, here concentration gradient also given m by a also estimated. So, d and rho given. So, if we put all these values here we can find out that t equal to this 31.25 into 10 to the power 3 second. So, that time is required. So, 3.25 into 10 to the power 3 second that time is required to reach the carbon concentration from 2 percent to 1 percent over the depth 0.2 over the depth of uh, I think 0.2 millimeter. And this actually happens that we use the concentration value and as a we assume that this process happens at 800 degree centigrade. So, we use the value of d at 800 degree centigrade. So, this is one type of problem. Now, we look into another type of problem. In a laser welding process, the average laser power is used as 100 watt and it is focused on circular area of diameter 200 micrometer. Now, what is the laser power density uh, uh, in this case? So, how you can estimate the power density? So, first the diameter which is focused on the sample that is given 200 micrometer that means 2 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter and laser power is 100 watt and but what is the cross sectional area over which the power is focusing that cross sectional area equal to a into pi by 4 into d square. So, we can find out the cross sectional area. So, basically laser power density can be measured by p by a. So, power divided by the cross sectional area and we can find out that 31.83 into 10 to the power 8 watt per meter square. So, that is the power density. So, we can estimate the power density because sometimes this power density is useful to decide whether the uh, laser focusing on a, any sample it will create any kind of its conduction mode or uh, whether it will create some key hole formation within the sample itself based on this uh, power density. Another type of problem if you see that uh, in a resistance micro welding process the applied voltage is 2 volt and the overall contact resistance between the bar joint sheet is given 2 into 10 to the minus 4 ohm centimeter square. Now, what is the amount of the heat generated uh, per unit area during this process we need to estimate. We you see that heat amount of generated H equal to I square R T I is the current flowing through the uh, sample R is the contact resistance overall resistance and T is the duration of the time over which we put the current flowing through the through the uh, sample. Now, voltage equal to I into R. So, from here we can convert H equal to in terms of volt because current is not given here only the voltage is given. So, H can be in terms of volt and H by T can be represented V square by R. 
now h by t v is given 2 volt and r is also given so from here we can find out h by t equal to 2 into 10 to the power 4 watt per centimeter square so that actually amount of the heat generated part per unit area now uh, i think there are some uh, idea about the different uh, welding or mi micro joining and micro welding technologies their limitation their uh, development in the current scenario what are the development happens for the micro joining and nano joining technologies their typical applications and to some extent some kind of numerical problems that will try to help to more uh, understanding mathematically understanding the process and of course to estimate the different kind of parameters which actually use in the different uh, laser or any other oiling processes. Uh, thank you very much for your kind attention.